Hello. Thank you for listening to uh, these recorded services. Uh, I work just as hard, if not a little harder, to prepare these services for you and these lessons because they're still needed. May the Lord teach you the things that you need from him. A few announcements and things to think about. Uh, we are reaching what many feel uh, will be the kind of the plateau of this disease that's moving through our land. Different states, different cities, different areas will be different. Uh, we don't have a large number of cases in our county, and yet I heard a report, I uh, saw a report on Facebook, someone was tattling that somebody that they knew tested positive, and they were going in and out of Walmart with no gloves and no mask on their face. And, uh, you know, it, it's a little frightening. And the reason I mention it is, please be careful from this point forward with touching surfaces, uh, sliding your hand along a door handle or a rail. Uh, be careful to wear the masks and, and wear the gloves and sanitize frequently. Wash your hands a lot. S keep a little distance between you and other people. It's just good practice. There are many dangerous bacteria and viruses out there, and these would also protect us from those things. Many people would have better lives if they would do a better job of washing hands, sanitizing, being aware of not touching surfaces that they're not aware of, that they don't know how clean it is. Uh, people sometimes get careless. Some people are even malicious. And so we have to think for ourselves and protect ourselves. But you know, there's nothing that says you can't get together with church people and talk. Keep your distance. You can visit. Carol and I went to John Edwards' home and had communion with him and Tammy and Earl, just five of us in the home. We certainly were satisfying the rules of no meetings larger than nine or ten people. We were also doing the work of the church. John wasn't able to listen to the internet service and have communion, and so we went to have communion with him. And we would do that for anyone as long as it's within the rules set out for us by the church and by the state and by the federal government. You are the church. The church continues. Just because we're meeting, not meeting in the building right now doesn't mean anything. Our church continues, and, and you are a good church. You know, the most important thing uh, in church is not how many people are in the church building, although it's good to have a good crowd together every once in a while. There's just a certain dynamic to having everybody together and praising God and celebrating being together. We're going to have a day like that when this is over. But you know, the church is when two believers get together in the name of Jesus and pray, talk about the Lord, worship Him, uh, study His Word. That's church. That's church. Lift each other up in the Lord. That's church. You could gather in your home just your family, and it's church. Please don't get discouraged. Don't give up. Don't think that, it, you know, the church is not going on. Don't think that we're going to die. Carol and I don't have any plans. The only prayer we have is that God will keep us in the middle of his plans for us and for his church. So please don't be discouraged and don't give up on these days when things um, are discouraging it seems like it stretches on and and out, and and uh, it, you have to keep you have to keep praying every day. And you know that's what I want to talk about tonight in our study about prayer. What about those times that I have to just keep praying and I can't stop and I can't give up and I don't have an answer yet and it's still still concerning me. But and I keep praying. What about that? There's a wonderful example from the Bible um, that. Uh, shows a case where not only did the person have to keep lifting up the prayer request, but also he needed helpers, and people helped him to keep lifting up the prayer. It's in the book of Exodus, chapter 17, and verse 8. While the people of Israel were still at Rephidim, the warriors of Amalek attacked them. Moses commanded Joshua Choose some men to go out and fight the army of Amalek for us. Tomorrow I will stand at the top of the hill holding the staff of God in my hand. Joshua did what Moses had commanded, 
and fought the army of Amalek. Meanwhile, Moses and Aaron and Hur, H-U-R, Hur, climbed to the top of a nearby hill. As long as Moses held up the staff in his hands, the Israelites had the advantage. But whenever he dropped his hands, the Amalekites gained the advantage. Moses' arms soon became so tired that he could no longer hold them up. So Aaron and Hur found a stone for him to sit on. Then they stood on each side of Moses, holding up his hands. That's just what an amazing picture of praying where one person is praying and two others are holding up the prayer and holding up and helping. As a result, so then they stood on each side of Moses holding up his hands. So, so his hands held steady until sunset. As a result, Joshua overwhelmed the army of Amalek in battle. After the victory, the Lord instructed Moses, write this down on a scroll as a permanent reminder and read it aloud to jo uh, Joshua. I will erase the memory of Amalek from under heaven. Verse 15, Moses built an altar there and named it Yahweh Nisi, which means the Lord is my banner. He said, they have raised their fist against the Lord's throne, so now the Lord will be at war with Amalek generation after generation. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Let's have a prayer to start off the few thoughts that I have. Our Father in heaven, thank you for your word. Lord, open your word to us. Help us to understand it and help us to apply it to our own lives. And we'll thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, what about this? I mean, this is almost like, why did they, why were they so, why was it so necessary for Moses to hold up his hands? There's tremendous symbolism here and a lot of meaning, even for you and me today. So first of all, in, in those days, the people did not have a strong enough faith that they could believe without some kind of something to see and touch and hold on to, or not touch. Uh, so God let them have that staff. And there was other things. There's the Ark of the Covenant with the, t the Ten Commandments on the stone tablets. They're inside of there. There's uh, uh, the tabernacle that they built. These, these are things that the people needed. They needed to see something. They needed to be able to go to something in order to believe. And it helped their faith. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, if you have a, a cross on the wall by your chair, and that's kind of your prayer place, it's okay. We know that the cross hanging on the wall is not a magical symbol or anything like that. The power comes when we pray and believe. But for those people at that time, they needed... So, so the symbol of God's power was Moses' staff, that, that wooden walking stick. That was his symbol of power. That, when, he, when people saw that and when Moses raised it up, God's power was released in amazing, miraculous ways. It helped them believe. It helped them know that God was answering their prayers. And, of course, Moses holding up the staff is a symbol of prayer. And, and especially it's a specific prayer. God, help us fight our enemy. God, help us fight our enemy. Lord, help us fight our enemy. Today we know better. We, we don't need a magical wand. We don't need anything. Actually, we don't even need a building. The building is simply a very convenient way for us to get together and worship. But there are many churches in the world, many churches in the world that do not have a building. The church is you. The people of God gathered in the name of Jesus. Even two is church if we gathered in the name of Jesus. So you should gather together. You should have a church in your home. You know, two or three, more, five, just your family members. But you have church together in the name of Jesus. It's the church. Let me move into my notes here before I get off on a rabbit trail. Uh, my first thought, and it's important, God waits for us to pray. You know, that Moses holding up that staff, that was the symbol of prayer going up. We light candles in church, and some places they burn incense like, like the old days. 
And that smell and that smoke rising up symbolizes prayer going up to God. And as long as Moses held up that rod in his hands, then God's power was released to help the children of Israel fight the war. When Moses' arms got tired and the rod went down, you know, the prayer stopped. It's funny, but God waits for us to pray. God waits for us to pray, and it's kind of like Moses not raising up the rod. Um, and I wonder, I've thought about that, and, and the best conclusion I've come up with is if, if the people don't think it's something worth praying for, then God doesn't think it's worth answering. Now, I'm not talking about things that are of his primary and intentional will. God is working in the world today, and he's doing what he wants to do. He's accomplishing his plan. Things happen in the world that God is doing because it's part of his plan for the world. Don't think God is just sitting on the throne, twiddling his thumbs, waiting you know, for something, some date on the calendar. God is working every day. Jesus is praying for us every day. The power of God is being released every day, and God is also working through the church. The people of God are in the world and they're sharing the gospel and they're praying for people's needs and they're telling people that they, God loves them. They're encouraging people that are in bad situations. God's work continues and he has a whole set of things that are going to happen. Every promise that he has promised will come true. But there's other things in the world. There's situational things. And I think God just says, well, if, 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 if they don't feel like praying about it, then why should I answer? I don't know. I'm not going to try to explain God. He is so much bigger than we are. But for some reason, he waits until we pray. But when we pray, especially when the church, in at least two and as many as want to, but pray and agree concerning something in the name of Jesus, understanding God's will, it is done. God releases the prayer and says, yes, he releases the power to answer the prayer. You know, this episode with Moses and the rod is also a good example for us that we should pray specifically. You know, it's not just now, lay me down to sleep. No, we should say, Lord, release your healing power in the life of Jerry Scott right now in Jesus' name. That's our prayer. Uh, we did talk to Jerry this week. She had an episode, uh, some kind of problem with her uh, urinary tract and and uh, she had to go to the emergency room and we prayed for her we agreed for her and she's doing better now between the work of the doctors and the medication and prayer jerry's doing better guys that is the work of god in the world that's the work that we can be part of praying for specific needs here's moses is praying god help us fight this war against these amalekites who attacked us you may have prayer requests in your life Find somebody to pray with you, someone to agree with you. God's power will be released. And you should pray very specifically. Dear Lord, I need a job. Dear Lord, I need healing from my illness. And sometimes we pray along with the man who was the father of the little boy possessed by demons. Lord, help my unbelief. Help me to believe enough that you will answer my prayer. As soon as you know the need, pray specifically for it. And get someone to join with you and agree, a prayer partner, a prayer warrior. This is how God's power is released in answer to prayer. But you know, if you practice the presence of God all the time, you know what I'm talking about. I talk about this a lot. Practicing the presence of God. In other words, knowing in my mind, imagining, believing, making it certain in my own heart, God is with me. I am always in God's presence. There's no place in my life that I go that is away from God's presence. And because God is with me, I can talk to him anytime and all the time. No wonder the Apostle Paul said, pray without ceasing. He's always with us. He's always listening. Pray. Continue to pray. Don't give up. God is always with you. Jesus' name is God with us, you know. If you practice the presence of God all the time, just being in the presence of God all the time, prayer becomes a conversation that is ongoing, and you pray all the time. Well, my next thought. Sometimes our prayer will make us very weary. 
Another lesson from this story, from Moses' ministry in his life. He couldn't do it alone. He did not have the physical strength to do it alone. Folks, sometimes prayer is going to have to go on for a long time. Hours and hours, days and days. Right now we're in the middle of this medical crisis, whatever you want to call it. We need to pray every day. We need to stay focused every day. Not stop asking God for help. Do not stop praying for your brothers in Christ and sisters in Christ, for your neighbors, friends, and family. And it can, you're going to get tired. And another day, another day of prayer, another day that we don't have all the answers, another day they're telling us to stay home. It's going to get wearying. You need some friends to help you pray. You need some friends to lift you up. You need some friends to encourage you. And there's somebody out there that needs you to be their friend, to lift them up and encourage them. Encourage one another in Christ so that your strength will be enough and your joy will be complete. Lift each other up. Don't let any of our church family or your family members, don't let them be alone, praying all alone. Let's join together in prayer. You know, prayer that reaches out for God's power can be very hard work. We have, Carol and I have experience at this, and, and we have prayed sometimes, and we know that God was using our prayer to release great power. And afterwards, you're just exhausted. You remember that time, Jesus, that the lady secretly touched the hem of his garment? And he said, who touched me? And they all thought he was crazy because he was surrounded by people. He said, no, I felt virtue go out from me. I felt God's power being released from me. Folks, in prayer, God will release his power through you and you'll feel it. Sometimes you'll be tired. And just like Moses, we need somebody to help us hold up and not get so weary that we can't keep up the prayer. Another thing that wears on us is something like this, this disease that just where it's days and days, weeks of ongoing prayer. Don't give up. Don't lose hope. Don't stop trusting. God is hearing. God is working. God is releasing his power to help those who trust in him. Don't give up. Keep on praying. And be an encourager for others so that they can keep on praying. Third thought. It always helps to have some help. And along in a difficult prayer. Call on your prayer partners. Agree together concerning things that you know are God's will. We miss out on great answers to prayer because we pray improperly. The book of James, he said, you, you pray amiss. You, you, God doesn't answer because you're praying selfishly. Yes, we're supposed to pray for our personal needs and even our desires, but we also have to remember that God knows better and we may pray for something that we desire, and God may say, you don't need it, and it's not good for you, and you're not going to get it. Then we should say, yes, Lord, yes. But even so, uh, if we pray unselfishly, God's will be done. Even then, sometimes, even though it seems like a good thing we're asking for, God knows it's really not good. You won't always get what you ask for, even when everything seems to be in order. But I promise you, there's an even better answer to your prayer that's coming. God might say no to some specific prayer, but it's because he's got something even greater, even better coming along. It's going to be a great help for you, and you don't need this thing that you're praying for. But whatever you do, don't pray selfishly. Don't pray just for yourself. God very seldom answers a selfish prayer, except for one. There's one selfish prayer God always answers. Dear God, forgive me for my sins and save me from hell. It's a very selfish prayer. And he always says yes. He, if we sincerely pray for forgiveness, he always forgives. Otherwise, we need to always remember, we don't understand everything. We don't know what's best, but God does. So when you pray, even when you're praying with power, even when you're praying in hard work and you're joining together with others, Always remember, Lord, you know what's best. Your will be done. So we find ourselves here in, in this coronavirus episode, and, and it's scary. Um, 
they're, they're saying that they're maybe starting to see there will be a time down the road when, when we'll get past it, but it's not going to be quick and easy. And we find ourselves in a situation a lot like Moses. God uh, allowed them to use physical objects as symbols of his power. But today, we pray without, you know, prayer icons. We don't need statues. We don't even need Bibles. Although Bible is sure good, but don't think that there's magic power in that printed page or on the Bible on your phone. You may look at the Bible on your phone. Don't think that there's magic power in it. It's just the Word of God. It's when we listen and when the Holy Spirit of God speaks it to us, that's when the power hits. Today we don't need an object to believe. Today we can believe by faith without having seen, without miraculous signs, simply because we know how much God loves us and because we've seen him do it before. So, trust God and don't expect signs and miracles. Trust God and don't, you know, you don't need a cross in your, you don't need to rub a cross in your pocket. No magic there. That's just a nervous twitch on your part. Just believe. Pray believing. You know, the symbol for power in the Old Testament were these objects. You know what the symbol for God's power is today? You are. The people of God in the world are the symbols of God's power. The people of God in the world is how God's power is released in the world. You are the hands and feet of Christ. You are the voice and you are the prayers of Christ for those around you. Be the representative of God that he needs you to be in the world, especially pray. Pray for people's needs. Pray. Another application thought. Prayer works. They actually did a, some studies, more than one. Double blind, real scientific. And they measured the results in which those who were prayed for improved drastically more than those who were not prayed for. They had groups of people in the hospital. The ones that were prayed for statistically, and that's a, a big number. It wasn't just that there was a bigger number. Statistically, it was much, it was significant that more people got better in this group, even though they didn't even know they were being prayed for. Prayer works. And if you've been walking with God very long, if you've been in the church very long, you know God answers prayer. Prayer works. If you are asking for something that pleases God, he will give it to you, to us, to the whole wide world. Believe when you pray. Leave room for God's will, of course. I believe God hears, and he is answering. He's answering every prayer. He is. may not be exactly the way I expected it, but he is answering. And my third application thought, Jesus specifically stated that if two or more agree, Concerning some prayer request, God will grant the request. When you pray, remember, if you have somebody joining together with you and agreeing in prayer, God is hearing and he is answering with great power. You come to the time of prayer, uh, I challenge you, be victorious in your prayer. Be unceasing in your prayer and find someone to pray with you and to agree together concerning your prayer. I want to close with prayer and we want to remember all of those of our church family who have needs and I'll ask you as we pray together, will you agree with me in prayer? Our Father in heaven, we honor your holy name. You are holy and we want to be holy you're holy people in the world let your name be hallowed in our lives O god and may your will be done may your kingdom come to this earth and may your will be done as you want it just like it is in heaven lord when you speak it it happens your will be done in our lives and lord we pray for the needs of our church some are so discouraged because of this strung out situation with this disease some need jobs some uh, need more hours at work. 
Some, Lord, are sick with other illnesses besides this cold virus. Lord, we pray that you will touch. We agree together in Jesus' name. We say amen. Touch and heal and provide and help for each one of these needs. Touch Jerry Scott, Lord. Touch her and heal her and bring her back to full health. We agree in Jesus' name. Help John Edwards, Lord, that he won't be discouraged and lonely. Lord, remind his family to keep in touch with him and not let him spend many, many hours alone. Lord, help John to be encouraged, we pray. Let your Holy Spirit warm his heart with your presence. We agree in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that you will stop this virus from shutting down the world, that the people of the world will learn lessons from this and not be in a situation again like this where the whole world comes to a screeching halt. I pray, O oh God, that many good things will come out of this stop, this shutdown. Uh, people will grow closer together as family and friends. And the church will grow stronger in its love for each other and love for lost and love for the world and love for God. Lord, I pray that in the end we'll say it was good for us. Lord, we agree together in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we look forward to the day that we will join together in the church again here in the building and worship you and celebrate. And of course, we also look forward to the day that we'll have a great reunion of all the church in heaven, in your presence. Lord, we look forward to that day. But for now, give us the strength, Lord, and the faith and the courage to speak boldly the name of Jesus, to call on prayer warriors and to agree together for great things that please you. And we'll thank you, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please. Stay in touch. There's ways for you to give your offerings, and um, you can get a hold of Carol and myself. Uh, you can send uh, offerings to Post Office Box 224, Venita, Oklahoma, 74301. You can uh, find uh, Dee or Delbert or Audrey, and you can give them the offering to turn into the church. They are our financial committee. Whatever works for you, may the Lord bless you. We pray in Jesus' name, amen.